So I'm not sure whether I should grow the beard or not. Please tell me in the comments. But luckily, that's not what we're going to talk about. When View 3 actually released, Pina became an important part of the overall landscape. Pina is a replacement for View X. Or is it? Or do we need either of them? Let's talk about it next. So let's get into this. I'm starting with a project that can show some books from Open Library. I've done a bunch of demos like this. And I have a project that's not using Pina yet. And I'm going to convert this from simple reactive objects to using Pina. And we can talk a little bit about why, how, and what the benefits are, and maybe some of the things I don't get. So this is already running without any of our changes, right? This is just the before project. And this project's pretty simple. It just has a couple of categories. And when I pick it, it goes and loads it. And it'll show you a bunch of books based on that category. This is all just using the openlibrary.org API. And I want to be able to allow myself to do the same thing with Pina instead. So we can sort of explore that. So the first thing I'll do is I'll open up a console real quick. And let me make this a little bigger so you can see. And all I'm going to do is npm install Pina at latest. I'm sure someone will tell me I'm mispronouncing it, but I think it's Pina with the magic N. And once it's installed, we'll be able to see here in the package.json that we have Pina, and I'm working with the 2011 version right now. There may be some beta versions out there, but I'm going to work with this public version right now. And what's interesting is because I'm using Vue and Vite, Pina is sort of the replacement and even the official replacement for Vuex. And it's trying to do things in a way that Vuex really couldn't do it. And we'll talk about a little bit of how it's different from that and what that looks like. And so let's talk about a couple of simple things. First of all, all my sort of logic is in this library.ts file here, and I'm just exporting a bunch of different objects. Some of them are reactive, like this busy flag. I'm using a ref here. Others are just cons, like this category doesn't need to be reactive because it's not changing. It's just a list of known categories. And then I have several functions that are interacting with them. And because they're all in the same file, I'm able to use them because they're all enclosures, right? Similar to what I'm doing with a lot of the composition API is similar to what I'm doing here. But this is sort of a mishmash. There's no framework around this. There's no conventions around this. I'm just sort of flying by the seat of my pants to make this work. And instead of doing that, let's go ahead and use Pina. First thing you're going to need to do is actually to add Pina to your app. Now, Pina supports one or more named stores. And so you need something at the top level to be sort of the container for all of that. And so what we're going to want to do is add a use statement here for create Pina. And I'm going to get that from the Pina NPM package as well, right? And all this does is say, I'm going to support you adding your own stores here. I'm going to add all the little things that I need at the top level to sort of manage them. Now that we've sort of bootstrapped it, we're going to want to actually take and create one or more stores. And I'm going to do this in that source folder. I'm going to create a folder for stores, and I'll call our first store the main store.ts. I'm using TypeScript here. You can certainly do this with JavaScript, but I've been using a TypeScript for a lot of my projects, and that's one of the benefits of Pina is that it works better and more obviously with TypeScript. And all we're going to want to do here, and this is going to feel a little similar to the way that the Composition API works, is we're going to export a generated function called use main store. And you can call this whatever you want, but it's going to be a function that is defined by define store. Now, this define store comes directly from Pina. Let's bring in that import. Now, the first parameter in define store has to be a name of the actual store. This is something that is different from the way that Vuex worked, whereas Vuex had one instance of Vuex and then had submodules if you wanted them. Here, you can define as many stores as you want. You just need to use this first parameter to name them. 
And then the object that's being passed in is very much like the option syntax. There's conventions for objects that have the different parts of the store. The first one being state. And this is going to need to be a function that returns an object that contains the state. And so you can cruft up and do work in that function to create that state. But this is being deferred, which is why it's going to be a function for state. And then we're going to have actions and getters. Now notice if you're coming from Vuex that there's no notion of mutations. And this is because they're not as necessary. Pina doesn't have that idea that at development time that it's going to protect against that change. In fact, it's openly encouraging you to change the state when you want to and where you want to, which gives you some more flexibility, but does mean that you need to be concerned about too many state changes without you really thinking about what's going on. And that really just leaves actions and getters as the two other pieces there. Actions are things that actually are going to be called like a function, and getters are what you can think about as computed properties. So let's go and open up our library, because I'm just going to convert this over. And so I know I'm going to need my busy flag, right? And so I'll go ahead and the state, I'm going to return busy, and I'm going to give it a default value of false. Now notice there's no ref here, there's no reactive because the store itself is going to know about and monitor those changes. I'm going to need an error here as well, which is just going to be a string. And if we look back at library, we have two more pieces. One is an array of work called works, and these are the books themselves that it's filled and bound to. And so let's copy a little bit of this over. And again, I don't need the reactive piece, but because this is TypeScript, I do need to go ahead and bring in that. And this is just a model I have, an interface in TypeScript that defines what that work looks like. And the last piece here are going to be the categories. Now, in our case, this category is just an array of objects that we don't really have a type for, and we can just assign them there. Now, in this case, we can't really tell it that the categories are read-only, which is really what we want here, but hopefully our code won't really mess with it and we should be fine. Later on, we could change these categories to be dynamic or from an API call. So there may be benefits of leaving that here. But in this case, we're returning this object that represents the entire state of it, right? And so if we take this store, we would be able to come over to our component where we're using it, this book list, and we should be able to replace all these objects we were getting from the library with the same named objects we were doing from the store instead. And we'll do that in a minute so you can see what that looks like. But let's finish up with this main store. Now inside of the library, I have really two functions, a clear books, which I'll copy and bring over here. And in this case, I can just define clear books as a member that happens to be a function and that works, but it's complaining about the works because it doesn't know what it is because we've defined works now, not as a top level property, but as part of that state. And so much like the option syntax, it actually puts it on the this pointer for us. And so in changing this, we're just adding that this pointer here. If we go back to the library, I can do the same thing with this more elaborate function that actually loads the books. And I'm going to need to do the same thing. I'm just going to have to add this when I'm actually dealing with the properties. But notice that here where I have error.value, because I was dealing with reactive properties before, I can just say error here, and I don't have to think about those as being reactive. I can just set and get them as necessary. And let's go ahead and fix those last two up. And I will need to add to my load books async here, right? Because this is going to be async because we're using an await in here. And this is perfectly valid inside of Pina, just like anywhere else. But we have a couple of other properties we're going to need to work with, like we need to be able to bring Axios in, and I'll just bring in that default. And library result is another of the models that I'll bring in. And so we end up with library result and work from my models, as well as bringing in Axios to do the actual execution. So you can see that this store model is just managing the state. It is not supplying API calls or any of that. If you've already abstracted that out, you would just call them here. Or in my case, I'm calling them directly inside of the action. And so for now, the store is pretty much what we need it to be. But how do we go ahead and change our use from this library code over. 
I'm just going to comment that out so we can see what that used to look like. And what I'm going to import here is use main store. And you can see it found it in the main stores.ts for us because I want to be able to use the store instead of the blank objects, right? And so when we look at this setup, we have a couple of things to think about. First of all, we want to return these missing pieces to our binding. And we're also going to need to use it when we call clear books and load books. So let's go ahead and define the store here as use main store. We're going to execute it and get a copy of that store. And notice that it's inferred this information, this type safe information that it can check that has the methods and the properties, etc. And so this store, I should be able to come over here and just say store dot clear books store dot load books and that works equally well this event source is more about me pulling data out of the event and typescript doesn't like that but it works so we're just going to ignore that i have a little curly brace there hope everyone's okay with that um but what we could do is actually just return the store here and then make all these changes up here like store dot error we could do that and that's one approach, depending on your object, that might be the right approach. The other approach and the approach I actually like because I still want to be able to use these objects within the code if I need them. Luckily, our function here doesn't use any of the state, but I want to be able to use the state if I need to later. And so I like to keep these separate instead of sending in the whole store. Personal opinion. And what we can do here is actually say that we want to get access to the different objects, right, that are in there. We could do stuff like const error equals store.error. And because this is just the string itself, by assigning it here, we're actually just assigning the string. We're breaking reactivity here. And so the way they actually suggest we do it instead is we're going to use it as dereferenced. So I'm going to say error, busy, works, and categories, right? Those are the four things we need. And I could get these from the store by dereferencing them. And this actually works, but this is going to break the reactivity just like the other version we looked at. And so there is a magic little helper called store to refs. And what this does, let me bring that import in from Pina, is it then returns these as ref objects. And so we can still manipulate them if we actually need to manipulate them or we can just leave them alone, right? And so by doing this, instead of getting them from the import here, I'm turning these individual objects into refs that are still attached to the store, right? They're just refs so that we, if we decide to change them, that they're reflected in the store. And then of course the return and everything still works. So if we save all of this and we go back to our store, we'll see failed to load books. We had an actual failure, so we're going to need to actually look at the code and see what went wrong. One of the things you'll notice is I changed all the this to this and this to this, but I didn't, because it's kind of hidden here, change the categories inside the string concatenation, a common place to miss this. So let's change that so we're actually pulling out the name of the parameter for our open library subjects. Come back here. And we have the same function working with Pina store. Now, why all that work for nothing, right? Well, one is that the store gives us a better model, if you need it, to sort of managing state versus the actions and even lets us do things like create getters. And in our case, we'll create a getter that says works count, which is honestly sort of arbitrary for the demo. but we can see that we can create here just simple methods passing in the state that allow us to do some computation here. And so getters can be an efficient way to do that instead of having to do your own computed. But the other reason, and the reason I hear from a lot of people, because at first I sort of dug into this and was like, is this better than just creating my own sort of library-like things? And I'm not sure it is in every case. But what I was pointed to was that in the view tooling, Pina, just like Vuex in prior versions, is now supported. And so in Pina, we can not only look at the state of our object, see what all that state is in our stores, and each of the stores will be listed here for using them, but we're also getting the timeline. 
The timeline's really interesting here because it's going to allow us to see what's going to happen to our object over time. So let's change this to science and then to love. And we can see here that we're getting changes. Mutations are changing in the timeline. And so we can really see what's happening over the breadth of our project by really looking at this. And so let's open this all the way up. And we can see that as we go forward in time, we're seeing the different states be shown as well. And so if you get the benefit of using the tooling, Pina is a really good reason for doing this because you can very easily see what's going on with all of these objects as you make changes, both in the timeline and in the actual object values here. The last quick thing I'll talk about is that the other thing that Pina is attempting to do that's really different from the way that Vuex did things is it wants to be modular. So each of these stores are atomic. They're not related. And we sort of implied this earlier when we had this sort of, we're defining a store and then we're returning a function that can give us access to that store, right? And we can actually do, let's go ahead and create a new store and I'll call this the auth store. And I'll do sort of the same thing I did before, which was export const use auth store. I'm not going to create a whole new store, so don't worry too much. Define store auth, and I'll just say states return user Sean, right? going to want something actually a lot different than this. We're going to want actions. We're going to want getters. But we have a store that we might want to use. And the reason I talk about this is you can use stores within stores, not just in the views here. So let's say that inside of my action here, before we loaded books, I need to confirm something. So I could say const auth store equals use auth store, right? Bring that in. And then if I needed auth store dot user, I could actually use this here, right? I could use this store within the other store. And that would be the same if you wanted to do it in state, though there's less argument for that. But this ability to have these relationships between the stores if you need them, or to have a number of stores that different components can use. Yes, there's some boilerplate to this, but it's pretty thin boilerplate, especially when you compare it to what Vuex was doing. So the encouragement to create multiple stores or even stores per view or per component might be compelling in this case. And so... I would argue that looking at Pina now that View 3 has shipped and is the official latest version, certainly worth looking at. Is there more work here than if you were just creating your own reactive objects? Yeah. Are you gaining some benefit? Yeah. And, and you're going to have to figure out exactly where that line is. In a project this small, would I normally bring in Pina? Probably not. But it's more about the complexity than the size of the project. You could certainly see yourself using Pina here to create stores, to be able to share information across different views in a pretty common way. Well, you've gotten this far, you know that uh, this is Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth, and really helpful if you've waited this long, it's probably time to subscribe and like the video. That always helps me. And um, I hope that uh, you continue to enjoy these shorter, maybe not that short this time, but these shorter coding lessons. Thanks for supporting all the work I do, and I'll see you next time on Coding Shorts.